are very welcome back to part two of Love, um, Actually, the first Romancing the Dungeon Christmas special. Uh, I'm Jacqueline, your Dungeon Master, and I am joined by uh, four wonderful people who are playing our magically enchanted toys. Grace as uh, Professor Penny, the Penguin Kenku Wizard. Eilish as Dawn, the Porcelain Shepherdess barbarian druid <laughs> tiny dancer the cloud prancer ranger fairy played by fiona uh, and cat who plays the good boy the best boy a stuffed did we discuss what 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 breed is the good boy I, like because I, I i don't know but I, i've been seeing a saint bernard a saint bernard labrador cross Ooh. <laughs> <Very Maybe. cute. laughs> is that a thing can, can that be a thing Maybe uh, I was imagining like this my my legit old toy I had this brown face with black ears and a and a, a white and black butt. No, <laughs> and there was, that's cute. So we can we can say that that yeah, he's that, that, a, he's that's a cross. What, yeah, that's what Labrador Saint Bernards look like exactly like that. Um, exactly like that. <laughs> when we when we left our our toys in at the end of part one, uh, they had one been brought to life by uh, Una Isidrim, uh, the mother of. Quillo and Fia, uh, and it's the night that she left the family uh, on Xmas Eve for whatever mysterious reasons. But having accidentally grabbed the bag of toys and not her bag of tools, she used some Xmas magic to enchant the toys with the goal of finding their way home. She managed to ensnare using her womanly wiles Seamus, the garbage collector slash trash man disposal, and six six months in a row employee of the month. Uh, and his caravan uh, of or, or effectively now known as the Trash Palace. The toys hitched a ride and once inside quickly found themselves not the only ones and they encountered Fizzy the Mouse, Dill the Rat and Tiny Tim along with Mary Blackbird. They have discovered that Fizzy's plan to feed the hungry mouths on Xmas Day may not be all it's shaped up to be. Just so you are aware, in, in terms of actions passing uh, and time uh, all that amounts to energy spent as well in terms of the magic so uh, I've reduced everybody by two so on count Tiny Dawn and the good dog are on ten and Penny you are on nine because yep. uh, you used one of yours to give uh, inspiration we pick up with the toys set around a small little it's a, it's a broken cup that has a little bit of a fire pit going in it fizzy tiny tim and dill are busy preparing you a meal you are their guests in the trash palace and they are busy off to one side making you a very very fragrant and damp festive meal uh i found some things and with my two flippers i'll just kind of present the crayon drawn wanted poster to the group kind of side-eyeing making sure that the others can't see this doesn't make sense i'm not sure we should be on here oh, oh professor that's very impressive did you draw them yourself oh no our good boy discovered these i did Yes, darling, when you were digging through all the trash, knocking everything off, did you not notice anything? <laughs> oh, well, I was so busy trying to free the, the friend. You did, and you did a great job. Good boy. I did. <laughs> oh, wag my tail. Tiny Tim just looks over his, like, rather muscular shoulder and with, like, just kind of a... Uh, and, like, half smiles uh, at the, the four of you and then goes back to helping Fizzy with the food. Gross. Tiny, <laughs> Tiny's going to flip over and, and look at the posters and say, uh, so, Professor, you're saying we should not trust the uh, garbage rats. Is that what we're going at here? What did that file look like that you gave them? It had the a skull on it. Uh, the yeah. crow warned us that more than one drop was enough to wipe out the city. I think they're going to go on a killing spree. I don't think this is very charitable. Do you think what? this killing spree involves Fia and Quillo? I'm hoping not. I'm because hoping... Because if it doesn't, do we care? <laughs> no, not at all. But they're going to try and get us to go with them. And I don't think we want to go. I think we stay here until we find Fia and Quillo. I, I don't want anyone to hurt anyone else. 
if we do we have to give them the bottle with the skull on it? What if we give them what's in the bottle? Do you still have what? the bottle? I thought you already gave it to them. I could get another one. Well, they have it. Like you want to switch? Tony's gonna Tony's gonna flex. <laughs> Flex his muscles and say, well, well, dear, if you need another lift up to that lovely bird, you know I'm here. Give me a deception check there, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. I kid, I, I kid, I kid. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <thing. I> kid. <laughs> I'll ignore that role. <laughs> I'm trying to think how we could actually get away from them. <laughs> well, um, we could hurt them so they can't well, go. Put them in the box. Mm. That's a great I was idea. Thinking That's they a brilliant didn't idea. Like the box. And it is Xmas. I mean, you put things in boxes. We could put a bow on it. That's a wonderful <laughs> idea, Professor. I heartily agree. Uh, as Tiny says this about putting things in boxes, you all remember the box that each of you came in. You all have a flash of a memory <sighs> and the sound of the paper being opened and then just this complete joy that, that, that was just... There was just darkness, but all you felt was joy as you felt yourself being lifted up. Uh, and whatever it was or whoever it was in front of you, just embracing you. And all of you have a surge of Xmas magic return. <coughs> so everyone else is back up to 11. And Penny, you are at 10 mm. points of Xmas magic. Thanks, awesome. Anna. <laughs> <laughs> but how do we lead them into the box? Well, they, they seem to enjoy garbage. Could we tell them there is some very delicious garbage in the box? Good try. That sounds like a good plan. Can Tiny, like, fly around and see if he can find delicious garbage? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Give me, uh, Tiny, give me an investigation check. Ooh, not his strong suit. That would be a six. It's all garbage. None of it looks delicious. <laughs> Can I try and help Tiny and, like, kind of see if I can sniff, sniff out something that is maybe extra, extra smelly, since they seem to be attracted to the <laughs> worst. A nice walk for. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, the good boy, give me a, uh, give me an investigation check with an advantage since you're using your sense of smell. Hey, natural 20. Yay. Awesome. Nice. As you as you see Tiny just flitting in and around and looking at loads of different garbage, yeah, you're all bewildered uh, as Tiny's trying to find things to eat and is rummaging through loads of different things, but none of it is edible. But the good boy, your nose picks up on something particularly rotten, particularly juicy. Uh, and as you kind of bury yourself into a pile of garbage, you sink your teeth into a rather fermented carcass of what looks or what was possibly a chicken slash pigeon. Mm. I will come out of that pile of garbage with my head held high and my tail wagging and I'll just be like, hey guys, you know, but with the food in my mouth and um, <laughs> kind of like boing, boing over to kind of like where the box is, like I'm going to go execute the plan. Like I'm going to go, I'm going to go pop this in the box. Are you are you saying this to the the other toys or to literally to everybody? Just to the toys. Just the, okay. You see, you all see the good boy with just the chicken saunter over to a toolbox or the the, the toolbox that Tiny Tim was in. I just drop the bones into the toolbox. I I drop it in there and then look over at the other toys wagging my tail and, and then back to the box and then back to them and then back to the box and then back to them. Like I'm kind of expecting maybe like. <laughs> If this is the time that we let them know, or if there's something else that needs to be done. Dawn's gonna clear her throat and then t turn on her charm again and kind of saunter over to the mice the way she saw Fizzy earlier and say, What is that delicious aroma coming from the box over there? And point seductively. Uh... Give me, okay, give me a performance check first. Oh, God. <laughs> Nine. Okay. So I was just rolling to see whether your performance as a flirty server would buy you <laughs> any sort of advantage on your persuasion check. So I feel like I'd be happy to give advantage on oh, you, you to, to give try and the joy? to try and see. Yeah, I mean, I've like you know maybe just rolling over, looking cute. So I'm like assisting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Sure thing. Uh, you get your, you can you can roll you can roll your persuasion with advantage, uh, Don. Eighteen. Way. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not so much you uh, persuading them. It's just that they look over and they see the good boy just kind of rolling around, and everyone everyone sees a dog. They want to go over and rub that dog's belly. <laughs> uh, but you're like, oh, there's something delicious over there, and they think you're talking about the dog. Um, <laughs> Don't eat the dog. <laughs> <laughs> but Fizzy, Dill, and Tiny Tim, they do. They saunter over and they're kind of. They kind of draw. They they're all like ah, oh, just Fizzy, just, 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 just such a good boy, and she's she's now kind of like rubbing her little micey paws into your belly, and Dill's like ah oh, yeah yeah yeah, and D- Dill's just rubbing the garbage. He he's <laughs> nobody's doing. Uh, and Tiny Tim is just like he's holding his tail very nervously because he he wants to touch the dog, but he doesn't know if he's got permission to do so. And then they all at the same time get the whiff of the very very dead cadaver of a chicken uh, in the box, and they're. Again, a little bit like Tiny earlier on when he was enamored with Dawn. They're all kind of like their heads go up, their butts go up and they sniff the air. They all kind of levitate for a <laughs> moment. And then they scurry up the edge of the toolbox <laughs> and straight in. And you all just hear like a... Rah, 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 as they begin to devour the chicken carcass. While they do that, can I cast Thaumaturgy to instantly slam... <laughs> the lid shut <laughs> you can uh, amazing uh, you you all just see the good boy go up on his back legs and then do a kind of a little hop and then straight down on his front paws as he casts thaumaturgy and with that the two lids of the uh, kind of like uh, like like sprung up almost like with a fright the two lids of the toolbox just go straight up and slam shut what the hell's going on in here what the what the what, what? Yeah, Fizzy, what's going on here, Fizzy? What's going on? And then just... Dawn, do you still have that twine? That thread? And then uh, she's just going to whip out her spear and be like, of course. That's how it was shot before. Maybe, (laughs) do you mind using it? I don't see why not. I need a lift. And she looks expectantly. (laughs) (laughs) And Oscar... Uh, yeah, you you look expectantly and I like and like Teddy, and then you just look right past him at Oliver and Penny, and they bound over. Uh, you're hooked up onto Oliver's back, and with your spear and thread, uh, you are twirling it around the handle as much as you can to try and tie it tight as you possibly can. Give me a survival check just to see how strong of a knot you have. Is there such thing as a shepherd knot? There is now. Good, because I rolled an eight. <laughs> <laughs> if you're tie- so you're tying your shepherd knot, you can roll with advantage. Oh, that's so oh, yeah. sweet. Such a generous DM yeah. on Xmas. Xmas Eve. <laughs> oh, nat twenty. Oh, why? Why is every so time t- I give an Xmas <laughs> gift, it's a nat twenty? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, you all watch as Dawn like just expertly spins this really complex but intricate knot it is tied shut at his, and tiny tim is like throwing his back into the roof of the cage just trying to like spring open the lids but the handles won't come apart and the the four of you just hear kind of like a lot of cursing and spitting and like <laughs> coming from the box the wagon kind of comes to a slow when you hear some murmuring outside and Seamus is talking to a guard and a guard said something like, oh yeah, Seamus, yeah, 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 Seamus, whatever, whatever it might be. And he's just trying to, you just care about, <gasps> as the guard holds his breath, desperate to try and not breathe in from the garbage wagon as it trundles. And you suddenly hear the sound of the wheels going over cobblestones and flagstones and you all feel your hearts just grow uh, a little brighter as home feels a little bit closer. Uh, you have made it into the city of Tezrab. You, you kind of feel this kind of wave of just like, ha. Huh. And you even see Mary Blackbird has kind of been watching kind of enthusiastically. And she just kind of flaps her feathers, uh, like her wings together, like kind of as a cast. Bulabus, Bulabus, my friend. Oh, you're ever so talented. Uh, you're such an accomplished young woman. Thank you, friend. I'll never forget you. Mayhaps before we, we part ways that you return the vial for fear those absolute fools would dare even think of poisoning. Where, do I know where the vial is? They, they, they literally oh, had it. Oh, it's still beside yeah, the vial. Like, yeah. Of course, friend. And then I'll look at Tiny expectantly. 
Would you do the honors? I mean, <clears throat> Tiny is a meanwhile <laughs> elbowing the good boy saying, she's doing, she's doing the voice. Do you hear the voice? Doesn't it just set your heart aflutter? <laughs> and uh, upon hearing Don command him to fly this poison up, he flies straight over to her at once, dear. Anything, anything you want. And he's going to grab the the jar and fly it back up to Mary. You, as you fly up, the, the wagon kind of lurches a little bit. And just as you land on the cage and you push the, the vial back and Mary Blackbird just kind of grabs it and she pulls it through as well with her free talon. You were drawing closer to home for a moment. And now suddenly the caravan has veered off left. That connection, that, that closeness that you were building is starting to, you feel it kind of drifting apart once again as the caravan has turned away from home. Oh no. We need to get off this garbage palace or get Seamus to turn around uh, no I'd rather get out of here if that's all the same to you <laughs> professor <laughs> that's fine do we have any sense of how far away we are still I'm gonna take the tag from my neck and sniff it really hard it, 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 you don't feel like you are a million miles away but it's definitely going to take you on foot probably an hour Dawn, as you huff the, the gift tag and you see Fia's name and the heart drawn on it, you know, deep down inside, you know that Fia is to the northwest and she's probably an hour away. <laughs> it's this way. <laughs> <laughs> the good boy will excitedly kind of like run towards the door and will yell out, Goodbye, garbage friends. Have fun in maximum security. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh we'll get you you're 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 oh yeah oh yeah uh, you just kind of hear it from inside fizzy is just rattled uh, yeah, yeah, rita yeah. from power rangers check <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 we're gonna we're gonna get your kneecaps and we're we're yeah, whatever, whatever fizzy says we're gonna do we're gonna do it to your kneecaps and, and the box is rattling violently back and forth and it's like get your foot out of my face and they're just yeah they're um, they're li- they're fighting with each other as the good boy hops out gleefully are the rest of you following? yeah oh yeah Tony's gonna get straight out there and take a big 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 sniff of Tezrab which I'm sure hopefully smells a little bit better than what's inside the garbage palace. Fully a mention. You would think. Fully a mention. Uh, <laughs> because as you hop out, no, you, it, it, again, you, the air here, it's it, it's cold. It does not smell like the garbage palace. The air the air here smells lighter. It, it's not as heavy. It's not as damp. It's not as encroaching or pushing down on you. It feels open. And it, there's even kind of a pang of kind of salt on the air. And you can hear somewhere in the distance the, the sounds of water just kind of lapping against rock or whatever it might be. So it does. It feels nice. You don't know where you are. You know where Fia and Quillo are. They, they're they that way. But where they are, it, they're deeper in all this. You have to travel deeper into this bad area, this broken place. What a dump. <laughs> I wonder why home well, is in such a sad place. Maybe their house will be nicer. I hope so. Come on, come on now. Chin up, chin up. Anything's better than where we just came from. Let's go, go, go. It's nearly Xmas and V and Quilla are waiting for us. As Tiny says this and, and spins upwards rather enthusiastically and sort of in a, in a kind of a leader uh, you know, we have to go there and we have to get there and we have to do things. In, in all that flurry and all that commotion, when you first woke up and Una was telling you all about uh, Xmas magic and, and its impact and stuff like that, uh, she warned you that toys should never be seen alive. It messes with Xmas magic. It, the, the belief that these things can happen, it, it doesn't really work, especially in adults, in, 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 in big people like herself. Uh, are, are not prone to understand it. It can sap the magic. You you all get this kind of wave of a, of a, of a fl- this just flashback as you hear voices all around you and they sound like big voices. They sound like that Una woman and they sound like that Seamus man but there's more of them. You seem to be in a place, a, a, 
poor place, a sad place, but with lots of big voices. So Toy Story rules. <laughs> Andy's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Can any of you disguise yourselves? Let me check. I think Tiny has a disguise kit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pull out a sheet. <laughs> For a character, would I say? We'll just be four toys in a trench coat. No one will know. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tiny does have a disguise kit, so he's going to whip that out and say, perhaps we can use this for something. What could we dress ourselves as that would go unnoticed amongst this part of town? I can make myself and one other of us invisible, if that's helpful. I can't do all four, though. What if Tiny hid? on good boy's belly and then <laughs> excuse me dear you mean closer to the ground <laughs> just until we're out of sight good boy if you're holding tiny and this is really a question for Declan <laughs> would that be considered something on their person technically your toys so check so this can be my Xmas gift to you, Grace, then. That technically, <laughs> so we can make that work that way. Yes, we can do. So that gets three of us. <laughs> Just leaves me. <laughs> uh, you might be able to hop on if we can pull that stunt twice. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny's going to... Um... <laughs> I'm just looking through my character description here and seeing all the cool stuff I have that I didn't realize. <laughs> and Tiny's going to realize he has a liar. So he's going to whip that out. And he's going to make direct eye contact with Dawn. Oh and he's going to start singing. I don't want a lot for Xmas. There is just one thing I need. <laughs> I don't care about the garbage or the rats and mice indeed. I just want to hear your voice. You know the one. Please do it. You've got no choice. Make my wish come true. Please do the voice for me. And you. <laughs> and he'll say, Dawn, I will absolutely go on the stomach of that dog over there if you ask me in the voice. <laughs> you know the one sorry I thought you were casting a spell I was waiting <laughs> I, was oh, I am oh, Declan are. it's a spell oh, of love okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can take inspiration for that Don's just gonna look at him and raise one eyebrow and say please oh, <laughs> oh he's straight under the belly he's gone <laughs> and then uh, she's going to climb up on top of Oscar. So you'll just see Professor Penny rub his flippers together in, this, in like little zaps, kind of like almost like static electricity between them. And he just goes, elementary, my dear. And then in like a <laughs> poof of snow, we're just all like, as the snow settles in our little teeny, I don't know, foot off the ground bubble, we're just, we're all invisible. That's so cute. <laughs> And I used a uh, I used a legendary action for that oh, awesome. to go up a level, just so you know. Fantastic! As you say this, Professor, the four of you just blink into into nothing, and rounding the corner, just comes several very merry Xmas revelers on the twenty seven pubs of Xmas, all in their various garb, coated in gravy and chips and beer and mead and so on and so <laughs> forth and some of them are half dressed as Xmas creatures one guy just kind of looks and just kind of points it's like I, I'm pretty sure pretty sure I just saw a dog and a polar bear and they were friends uh, there was a penguin and then there was a there was this gorgeous absolutely gorgeous tiny little fairy man and a very, very delicate little lady. And they were riding them and they were all friends and it was great. And then one well, of the ladies just turns around and she's like, Gerald, that's why, Gerald, that's why I told you to eat before you left the office. He, like, Gerald, that was not a good idea. The 27 pubs of Xmas, you, you gotta, it's a marathon, Gerald, it's a marathon. And then you're here's, over the corner. And it's like, Helen, will you hold my hair? I have a question, yeah. teacher. Do they have Christmas jumpers yeah, on or do, Xmas they, jumpers? What do Xmas jumpers in Tazrab look like? They all just say like? ho, 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 question mark. 
Um, <laughs> and, uh, and on the back, then it just says yes. Are we getting a spin off with all of those NPCs? <laughs> you will, yeah. It's been me drunk uh, at doing Christmas. Yay! <laughs> That's a new merch idea, though. Ho, ho, ho. Yes. <laughs> Write that down. Write that down. I, I am. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Question mark. Underlined. Yes. Underlined. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, so you're standing in an alleyway in the city of Tezrab, and you know exactly where you have to go to reunite with Quillo and Thea. You're just going to head on? Don's going to yeah, let out yeah. a shepherdess whistle. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, what's that sound like? I don't know how to whistle. Oh, okay, well, there we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's generally frowned upon to whistle down a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all have headphones in, yes. It would be preferred. <laughs> how did the whole game go down? Well, <laughs> I just thought it would be a great idea to whistle. <laughs> Completely and totally shrouded in the magical energies of Professor Penny's invisibility spell, the four of you rather merrily. It, 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 this is it. This is you're you're almost there. You you can feel it, and that glowing little heart on your chest it just grows brighter and brighter, and you can you almost feel it, the the beat or the pulse of it kind of coursing through you. As you round a, a corner, you just hear "I'll stay out, you bastard!" as a short little gnome lady throws a rather heavy drunk snow-haired dwarf out on his ass followed by a 10 gallon hat <laughs> well, miss, miss Morello, merry xmas to you hot stuff as uh, arthur mcguckett stumbles out of the copper rabbit and, and saunters out past you and heads home to mrs mcguckett where she's going to box the ears off of him uh, for being late for Xmas dinner as you pass the copper rabbit Marilla Whistlecoil as she bolts the door just kind of peers out from behind it and stares directly at the four of you doesn't see anything but just eh -heh. there's definitely nothing suspicious happening out there Good night, you bastards and <laughs> The door closes very, very slowly as, for some reason, this wiry-haired gnome lady just shouts expletives into the night air without stopping you or impeding you. You continue down the alleyway, almost like a beacon, like a, like a, a homing signal, whatever it might be. As you turn another corner, on the end of this alleyway, there you see the red brick stoned building almost kind of lit up all of you feel instantly that is where Quillo and Fia are you just know it as the four of you kind of stop and stare up at it everybody give me perception check Tiny got a 10 Don got an 8 Penny is 16 unnatural 20 okay Penny you hear it good boy you smell it smells like the garbage palace sounds like the garbage palace and you just hear and it's like get him get him get him tight get him smell him out smell those absolute get him yeah 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 get him get him get him do it do it fizzy said do it do it do it do it fizzy said as you hear behind you fizzy and dill squabbling uh with tiny tim uh they seem to be tracking you dawn and tiny you're just kind of in enamored with You've made it home. Whatever whatever this is, this is home. This is where you're supposed to be. It's the garbage, friends. But there's still lots of people around. It's very quiet down here. You haven't passed anybody since the, the copper rabbit and that gnome lady and that uh, very, very drunk dwarf who looks like Santa, but is not Santa. But you, you know that uh, Fizzy, Dill and Tiny are uh, coming up the rear. I don't think they'll be able to see us. Uh, run inside? Fight them? Uh, uh. Well, we don't want to bring that riffraff back to Thea and Quillo. We don't want them anywhere near them. I believe we should get rid of them post-haste. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Podcast is over. <laughs> <Yeah>. Goodbye. <laughs> um, how far away are they? Are they? They're behind you at least 25 feet, but ye came round a corner, so they haven't, okay. they haven't round that corner to ye yet. So... If you want to scout the building, if you want to try to find a way in, you you basically have one action here 
to determine whether it's going to be get into the house or try get into the house or try and maybe surprise them. Could I try and use calm emotions? I would like to try to calm the uh, emotions of a target who is hostile towards us and make them indifferent. Ooh. Uh, I believe they need to pass a charisma saving throw, which would be based off of my spell DC, which is 13. Okay. And are you casting it on Fizzy, Dill, or Tiny? Fizzy seems like the leader. So if Fizzy suddenly was like, nah, I'm actually chill. I feel like maybe maybe that would be the best course of action. So I'm going for Fizzy. Okay. And what are the rest of you doing? Well, Tiny is definitely determined that he does not want to bring these creatures anywhere near Fia and Quillo. So he's going to stand alongside the good dog and... Even though he kind of does detest magic and he'd rather slice these things up with his swords, he's going to prepare uh, to cast fairy fire for when these things round the corner. Okay. Professor Penny? I think Penny's going to hold his action until they've... I'd rather see if, you know, these guys have some good stuff in the works, so okay. I'm going to wait and just ready myself, rubbing my little flippers together. <laughs> and Dawn? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay with Penny on Oliver's back. Okay, so you, you are all still invisible. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll for a perception check. Now, they're basing it off of smell as well. It would be at disadvantage, but they have advantage, so it's just going to be a straight roll for Tiny. I believe uh, once you cast a spell, you're visible again, but I don't know if they're doing that before or after. It's before, it's, it's before you do anything, so I'll, again, because... I'm kind of giving ye the element of surprise here because they don't know that you're here. They're they're following the smell of garbage, uh, particularly the garbage that the good boy has was kind of rolling yeah. around in. Um, <laughs> okay, no, that's a that's a nine, so it's not going to be enough. They don't know where you are, but they know you've come this way. And the four of you see a rather irate-looking fizzy dill with a black eye and a tiny Tim frothing at the mouth. Fizzy has him on a lead, uh, as he, and he's kind of snorting the ear, trying to suss you all out. So she then has to make a charisma saving throw. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I did not make her a particularly charismatic lady, so, well, surprisingly. Um, <laughs> I got a nat 20. Oh, oh no! Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> Boo! Uh, where's the Christmas magic? <laughs> but friends! Hey, 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 <laughs> gets Xmas magic too, thank you very much. <laughs> Um, and uh, the good boy you just you kind of you do that thing where you kind of wag your your whole body but it's your head and your ears kind of flop back and forth and as you do the magic around you the invisibility that shroud just dissipates you're doing your best to try and calm remember when we were friends (laughs) and as I think Tiny would also be visible now okay yeah uh, they were like on. Oh yeah, they were together. Yeah. Good uh, dog. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, both of you just kind of blink in and Tiny Tim just kind of like stops and, and kind of does the same thing that Good Boy does and just kind of points and Fizzy kind of just like pats him on the back of the head. Dead. Meat. Walking. And <laughs> at that exact moment, the side door to Burbage and Sons, the pawn shop that Quillo and Fia live above, opens as... Mr. Burbage appears with a bag of garbage in hand. Oh, Quillo, we got to talk about responsibility. And he throws the garbage into the pail and the rats scurry behind a bin. Uh, And he just looks down and he sees the good boy and Tiny Dancer. Both of you lose three points of Xmas magic. As Mr. Burbage is just like, ah, and then, what, what? And he's just, look, he's he's trying to make sense of, and he's like, oh, oh, okay. You know what? Uh, no more cherry dwarf whiskey. He saunters back in, but yeah, both of you are down to eight points of Xmas magic. Oh no. He's now convinced that he's just had a little bit too much whiskey. Um, and that's why there's a wooden fairy with foam wings talking to a dog that's trying to cast magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't... He's turned around. Yes, yeah, he's turning around and going back inside. I'm gonna um, 
take like end our spell so we'll also become visible okay the door is if you want to because none of you actually took an action so if you want to dash you could you could probably make it in behind him yeah if we can try to run in get away Uh, from these rapscallions as you kind of just dash behind uh, mr burbage dawn and penny just kind of over over your shoulders you both just see fizzy just draw her, her mousy little finger like across her neck <laughs> tiny tim just like bleh, like almost like a, with a noose <laughs> and then you just see dill giving the both of you like the thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> fizzy just kind of slaps him across the the nozzle again and he just kind of rubs it as the four of you disappear behind the door and you just see mr burbage continue on through the hallway and head upstairs all of you are instantly hit. It's that thing like they're they're only maybe 15, 20 feet away. They're above you. But Mr. Burbage uh, is above you too. And he is still awake. And you have rats at the door. Is Mr. Burbage, he's not no, in the same he, room he, as he us anymore, no? he literally just kept on walking. He was just shaking his head saying that he's not going to be having any more whiskey. Is there a lock on the door? Behind you? Yeah, that we came uh, through. Give me a perception check. That is 18. As you kind of turn back, you see that it, it's dead bolted and he has, he did lock it behind him. So Tiny's going to fly up and inspect this and say, well, it looks like we should be safe and Fia and Quillo should be safe from those creatures. So I believe let's get up to them as soon as we can. Is there a crack under the door? You don't see anything. Like well, this is obviously a back entrance into the house and the business. So it doesn't, there's, doesn't, there's no immediate crack would be that you notice her at all because i learned a fun fact the other day that rats can fit in anywhere that their head can fit into that's disgusting beautiful so what would the four of you like to do how how many stairs is there you'd, you'd have to venture further out into the hallway so don if you would if you want to just kind of run out behind behind do some recon yeah it looks about maybe 18 steps up and don when you do you do see at the top of the stairs a small door that's slightly open and there's a little bit of light kind of cracking through it and you know that's where Fia is. Just let me check my notes. <laughs> What's everybody else doing <laughs> while Dawn checks her notes? <laughs> You'll look for a tree. Christmas tree. Okay. Um, so, Professor Penny, if you want to give me an investigation check. Good boy and Tiny. Tiny's going to kind of take a quick sniff of himself and say, Oh, no, 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 that's, that's not good. That just won't do. Because they've been just soaking up that garbage juice for so long and he's going to look around the kitchen for like a rag or a cloth or something that they can use to clean themselves up before they present themselves to Fiat and Quillo. Uh, Give me a perception check and the good boy. I think the same as Tiny is probably not good to be soaked in garbage juice. It's a bit better to be soaked in bubbles. Both of you roll for perception and we'll just take the higher of whoever is just to see what what you manage to find. Uh, Tiny got 22. Good boy got 11. Okay, so we'll go with that jolly 22. Uh, (laughs) You do, uh, Tiny, as you kind of fly up and you're kind of looking, you're scanning the countertops, the place is a tip. It's not not garbage palace tip, but there's just stacks of plates in the sink that are soaking. And you do see a bar of soap at the end of it. There's a couple of rags and stuff like that, but the kitchen isn't very well kept. Okay, well, Tiny's going to grab the, the soap and the rags and fly on back down to Good Boy and get a scrubbing. Okay, so you're you're having a little bubble bath uh, on the kitchen tiles while Professor <laughs> Penny and Dawn do some retcon. Dawn, as you headed out into the hallway, kind of behind Mr. Burbage, as quietly and as stealthily as you could, Penny, you went through a small doorway to your left that kind of leads into what looked like another room or area. And there is a very small what you would hypothesize as a family room or a living room there's a a rather broken looking chair like a long chair and in one corner there's a fireplace just off from that under a rather off-centered portrait of what looks to be a shader kai elf family a, a man and a woman with a young boy kind of standing between them. And in the woman's arms, there is a little baby Shader Kai elf uh, that she's kind of looking down at. There's a half-dried, very dead, scrawny Xmas tree. There's nothing underneath it but a small brown bag. I'm going to look in the bag. 
at first it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't all like kind of make a lot of sense as you're kind of looking at it it's like long little strips of metal with little hooks there's some rope some caltrops there's a rather sharp looking dagger there's a mask it looks to be like some sort of thieves tools and you remember una saying that she grabbed the wrong bag um i'm gonna leave those and go back to my pals who are cleaning themselves up yep you, you, to, to the kitchen. you come across uh the good boy getting a full-on belly rub with a bar of soap from tiny who's squeaky clean they don't look brand new but they do look they look better than they were when they were covered in slime dawn as you are like almost like a moth to a flame kind of you you meant to go back you had to go back and tell the others what you saw uh, and the door and fee is right there uh you took a couple of steps closer to the stairs you can still hear the others behind you but you just hear kind of a you you he he noise coming from just slightly under the stairs um i'm going to duck down and like squint and use my animal <laughs> animal voice to say hello <coughs> who's there <coughs> and as you kind of squint down you're looking in the dark you don't see anything there's just dust and then you just see lots of little eyes blink open rolling out from under a gap in the stairs you see what look like little tumbleweeds of dust with floppy little and they roll out and circle around you and there's just little trails of dust around them uh can i reach out to like pet one of them you reach out and as you do you feel a little kind of it's it's that like kind of static and then as you touch take two shocking damage (gasps) as you and the dust bunny static electricity off each other and the dust bunny is now one big ploof of dust and hair and lint and it just kind of rolls away and then the other little smaller dust bunnies kind of half let out kind of little giggles and they roll around you too <laughs> i'm just kind of look over my shoulder to see if i can see any of the others oh yeah they're literally it's um it's that scene from top gun with the car wash uh, i'm gonna do the whistle again okay to get their attention and be like gesturing in a circle around me <laughs> you manage to all pry yourselves away from that uh, bubble bath and you see you all do see dawn standing in the hallway surrounded by a lot of dirt you should have joined us in the bath <laughs> <laughs> maybe i could i could do with some of those bubbles over here i bound over and shake all of the bubbles that are in my fur onto all of the dust <laughs> <laughs> and like the the dust bunnies kind of start to roll and kind of a few of them let out little hisses as they they get wet and they get slow they kind of recoil away from the the water i found the tree are we supposed to be under the tree but she's right there and professor penny as you see dawn point up you just feel the heart beat uh, heavy uh, in your chest and you know that <gasps> Thea is right upstairs oh my gosh and then you just hear a dust bunny just go, nye, nye, nye. <laughs> Shut up! Like swat at him. <laughs> Not uh, touching. Uh, but just like... All, <laughs> yeah, well, unfortunately, Oliver like, is like sniffing at it and then just like, lets his, <laughs> like his tongue just like, bleh, And then he gets a bit of a shock <laughs> and you get a bit of a shock, but he takes like, like your stuffed animals. The Yeah, the good boy, you come over and I'm assuming Tiny, you flit over at this stage. Yep, yeah, I'm flitting over to go at a... Uh on with a wet rag uh the good boy and uh tiny as you follow behind uh penny and you come out to dawn and these tiny little adorable slightly wet dust bunnies two very poofy ones you both feel that quillow is you both know that quillow is upstairs you are compelled to go there we need to go upstairs yes i i agree let's go immediately we have to be quiet I like bark under my breath, just like a whisper. <laughs> bark, bark, bark. Oof. <laughs> the four of you uh, start to to climb the stairs. There is there's just this sense of anticipation and 
pent up energy and excitement and it's just you can see the finish line as you climb those last few steps you just hear a creak the hallway overhead on a small table you just see a nub of a candle burn and the flame goes out as overhead a window that looks out into the alley on the other side of the house is pushed open and scrambling up the wall Fizzy, Dill and Tiny Tim have found a way into the house and plant literally jump from the windowsill down onto the top step they have the high ground Fizzy cracks her fingers well 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 looks like we got a new garbage palace Professor Penny's just gonna like get that like lightning staticky stuff going in between his fins and just stare at Fizzy who exactly are you? I'm Fizzy and this is my house now thanks for the keys chumps she just flicks the end of her cigarette down the stairs at the the four of you and you hear kind of a squee and a squawk and a little bit of a cry as one of the dust bunnies catches fire uh, and it's just turned into smoke and cinder and the other dust bunnies just kind of roll away and kind of half cry and scream and try to find shelter from the fire Professor, I believe they are what did that small angry woman say bastards <laughs> I think that's what they are <laughs> yes but she has the same magic that we do did I forget to tell you that I might have forgotten to tell you that <laughs> so maybe she's a toy maybe she wants a real home don't know oh that's very sad <laughs> and, and as you say this Professor Penny she stares you dead like she's eyeballing you hard she doesn't like her secrets her, her dirty laundry being aired and we roll for initiative uh tiny got 18 okay don got five six 22 okie dokie good boy you see uh fizzy flick her cigarette at you misses and it hits one of the dust bunnies at the bottom of the stairs you see that the tiny tim and dill look like they're uh, rearing up for a fight uh, as tiny tim pulls out a small little dagger good boy will say you can't have this home this is our home and we'll cast the legendary action old dog new tricks and good boy will summon a magical sword and shield for a minute okay and with the spiritual weapon he will defend his home like a good duck guard dog and um, <laughs> go at the one that looks the most troublesome, which I think is Fizzy, because that's the ringleader. Okay, make an attack roll with your spiritual weapon. Does a 14 hit? It does. Take six points of damage. You. Wh- what does your, what's uh, the good boy's spiritual weapon look like? Like a big old bone club. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's so cute. <laughs> You just kind of let out kind of a a howl. uh, And as you do, this white and pink light just kind of emanates around you, good boy. And your AC increases by two. And at that exact same moment, a bone club appears and just bonks Fizzy right on the head. uh, And she stumbles back a little bit. And then there is kind of that kind of squeaky sound as as, as you hit her. So that would be your action and your bonus action with your spiritual weapon. Uh, Do you want to do any movement at all or are you staying put? There's about, there's a rough, there's three steps between you. So that's probably five, five, ten, fifteen feet. I'll run up to be like, you know, like, um, so they can't get past Past. me easily. Okay. Yeah, you're not going to run past them, but you're kind of putting yourself between them and the others behind you. Yes, exactly. Tiny Dancer. Okay, Tiny's going to kind of bristle a little bit because they're so close to their goal and then these arseholes have appeared and he's going to fly up right in front of them and say, you you won't stop us. We're so close now and you will not get near Fia and Quillo. Not while we're here. And he's going to cast a fairy fire on them, but it's going to be like real sexy. So he's going to do like that thing where like he flings back his hair and his head and he points an arm and a leg. <laughs> And that's how he casts fairy fire on them. It's hot. It's v- Don uh, does a double take. <laughs> that was, that was sexy. <laughs> <laughs> what the? 
of what? <laughs> so they have to make a, a dexterity saving throw, and the save is okay. 13. Uh, Dill got a nat 20, so he's good. Fizzy got an 18, so she's good. Tiny Tim got a nat 1, so um, not so good. <laughs> one yeah. out of three ain't bad. <laughs> Dill just kind of like, what? And he just looks around, and it's just, he, he didn't see you do anything, so he, like, he was distracted by something. Fizzy just kind of keeps the magic at bay. It doesn't, it doesn't connect with her. Like as you, as you try and, and wrap her in this light, this burning fairy fire, it doesn't uh, take. Tiny Tim is lit up literally yeah. like an Christmas tree. Literally, it's those, it's flickering lights. At, but there's, it's, it's, it's the slow ones though. It's you know, it's quite nice. It's not like it's not a very flash, flashy show. It's just slow, kind of transitional <laughs> fade into the next color, back and forth. It's quite beautiful. Bonus action. He's going to shout at Tiny Tim, I'm the only tiny one here. And he's going to fly forward with his short swords in each hand and uh, be alongside a okay. uh, dog ready to attack. As you fly towards the, the good boy to, to help uh, and to kind of get into the fray, Dill, kind of hearing you shout, kind of turns back. And, oh, 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 yeah, we're, we're fine. Yay. And, and he leaps forward with his dagger one uh he kind of pulls from a side pocket and he puts it in his mouth uh, and he leaps at you with does a 13 hit no and then obviously a 12 doesn't hit either <laughs> dill leaps at you jabs forward with the daggers misses and sticks them into the steps and he's now he's behind both you and the good boy looking down the stairs but looking at you as well as he's kind of thrown himself in, into the middle of it fizzy takes just a stance, holds her, her little mousy claw up into the air. All of you just see light, this muddied, white, rusty pink light twist and turn black and grey around her fingers as bolts of light shoot outwards and she casts magic missile at you, Professor. So that's two... Two and two. It's like six damage. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I rolled one, I rolled three ones. Yeah, she's just kind of like she's snarling, like she's she's really vexed. Professor, it is your turn. In response, Penny is going to lock eyes with her and then he'll like rub his little fins together and just in a in a mini like snowstorm around him, he disappears and appears right behind the three foes. To hopefully catch them off guard. So that's Misty Step as a bonus Perfect. action. And then as my action, I'm going to keep rubbing my little fins together and just like keep them together and then like point them at Fizzy. And we just see this huge like icicle shard go right for her. That it's ice knife at second level. So that's going to be a 21 to hit. Yeah, that, that hits. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm doing the right damage here. So we have 17 damage. And then the two others <laughs> need to do a deck save for me. I'm assuming they're within five feet of her. Oh, Tiny Tim is, but Dill isn't because he jumped over. He tried to attack. So it'll just be Tiny right. Tim. Uh, okay. A deck save of 17. That makes it. Yeah, he's good. Okay. You just, there's just kind of a little flurry of snow. And Don, you're a little bit cold. And when you kind of look over... Professor Penny isn't there anymore. Both uh, the good boy and Tiny, you see uh, the professor kind of like, again, there's a, a little poof of, of snow and right behind the, the two rats and the mouse. Uh, and as quickly as they appear, there's a just a, a, a sharp icicle forms between their flippers. It just shoots straight out towards Fizzy. And before she can react or, or defend herself it cracks straight into her and it explodes and a load of ice shards spray across tiny tim like his hair is just frozen and stuck he doesn't notice it but fizzy there is a deep wound on her left side and she holds it as she looks like she's barely standing and it is dawn so she's gonna take her crook and slam it into the ground and say you won't break this flock we're hard as nails. And then uh, activate my legendary action. Basically, my well, my body turns to steel. So I have plus four to AC and plus two to attack. And advantage on intimidation. 
That is you, Dawn, down to four. Bonus action? So I'm going to point with my staff at Fizzy and say, this is your one chance to leave alive. <coughs> and she kind of like, she spits a little bit of blood on the ground. I, s- I smell the stench of Exmas magic off the four of you. And I, I, I knew it. And here, here, here you are thinking, thinking you're better than me. Well, let me tell you something. Pets are just for Xmas. And, and, and she scowls hard back. Did you make your intimidation check? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was caught up in the drama. <laughs> uh, 15. You, you kind of stare her down, but she's very, very far gone. Dill is, just kind of looks up at her and he's, he's, he's not worth it. He's, he's now, it's not worth it. Frosty. We, 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 need, we need to get out of here. We, we, it, 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 it's fine. We, 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 we got, we're going back to the trash palace. Uh, and Fizzy just looks at him and she's like, there is no trash palace. I was, I was, I was an Xmas gift. And I was discarded like yesterday's dinner. Again, she kind of stumbles forward a little bit uh, and she puts a hand on Tiny Tim's back. Get them for me, Tiny. And Tiny Tim just like he fixes an eye on you, Don. But he is going to uh, invoke opportunity attacks from the good boy and from Tiny as he darts straight down the stairs towards Don. And sorry, this is um, Tiny that's coming T- past Tiny us. Tiny Tim is rushing past the both of you if you both want to make... Okay, so we get advantage on attacks against him because of fairy oh. fire. Damn it. Okay, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. What have, I, what have I told you about reading the rules? <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> I'm glad I have that advantage. Yahoo! Natural 20 for Tiny! Okay, yeah. Whoa. Doesn't hit. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> um, a 15 for the good boy as he bites. Okay, the good boy hits, so you roll for damage. Tiny, you also hit, but yours is going to be a crit hit. Okay, that's 19 damage for Tiny. You can go ahead and add another 2 on top of that. As Tiny just bolts straight down the stairs towards dawn the good boy sinks his teeth in and tiny you get to shank him with your blade but neither of you stop him whatever fizzy says he does blood and pain and all that coursing through him he just doesn't stop as he barrels through the two of you he even kind of shoves dill out of the way dawn before you know it tiny tim is on top of you he is going reckless So that is a 22 to hit on the first one and a nat 20 on the second one. (gasps) Rude. Rot row. 11 slashing damage uh, on the first one. Okay. Um, 27 slashing damage. (laughs) I am down. Oh no. no! As this happens... Tiny Tim barrels down the, the stairs and he's literally like, la, 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 uh, as the good boy and Tiny try and stop him, he literally just brings his hands straight up and his claws and he bears straight down on top of you. And the first strike, you, you just feel yourself kind of s- like struck violently and you wobble. And then on the second, he lunges straight at you and he claws. Uh, at the same time, he shoves. And you fall backwards. I'm still made of steel, though. Give me a <laughs> dex saving throw. Can Tiny shout out, No! And with that gesture, grant her inspiration using one of my points. You can. So that's uh, Tiny, you're down to seven. Nineteen. Okay. Thank you, because um, the first one was a two. <laughs> <laughs> You, uh, you, you tumble back um, and you, you hit the first step, but you catch yourself. And as you do, you like, whew, like the last thing a porcelain doll wants to do is fall. But as you breathe a sigh of relief and you just hear, you hear Tiny shout out, no. Tiny Tim is literally just cleaves into you. You feel nothing for a moment. And then you all hear just a crack. 
as Dawn's right arm just falls and hits the step and her eyes fall shut and Dawn is broken Fizzy just laughs it's the good it's the good boy's turn the good boy is going to bonk Tiny Tim with the Bone Club. Okay. Um, make uh, an attack roll. 17. Yep. Hits. Okay. Please do take 11 points of damage. Okay. Tiny Tim isn't... He's he's full on. It's not... It's, it's, there isn't even a... A cute little squeak this time. It's just full on like bash. It's all um, business. <laughs> it's all business uh, from the good boy as the spiritual weapon, the the bone club, disappears and then reappears right above Tim uh, and strikes him straight on the the head. Bonus action. Are we able to heal, or is this a a, a death? You can you can try can try has anybody got some glue (laughs) (laughs) that's an action in that case i would like to try and use some of my xmas magic to mend my friend good boy as you bop tiny tim on the back of the head and he looks over his shoulder and he sees you 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 heard dawn break and crack with just kind of a whimper you feel yourself glow a little bit uh, and the magic leaves you uh, and you are down to five Xmas magic and you see Dawn's, the, the porcelain frame, rock a little bit but the magic doesn't take. No. Oh no. Tiny dancer. You've Dill in front of you. Mm-hmm. Um, good boy is beside you. Dawn is broken. Fizzy is on the stair or uh, on the, the, the landing with Professor Penny and Tiny Tim is looking back up at you. Okay, and if I went to go for Tiny Tim, I'd... You'd have an opportunity to attack, yeah. Tiny's going to see that good boy tried to heal Dawn and it didn't work, so he's going to get in a little tiny rage mode now because he is pissed off and all he can see is Tiny Tim. So opportunity to attack or not, he's just going to go straight for Tiny Tim with his short sword because he is angry. Okay, I'll make a... 16 to hit yeah that is my AC and that's 7 piercing damage as you okay. rush past Dill and he sticks you with his dagger with a yeah, I did it Fizzy I did it I, I got it real good Fizzy Tiny doesn't even notice this tis but a scratch because <laughs> <laughs> he's so intently focused on other Tiny and taking him down. So he is going to rear back with his short sword and pierce that fucker. Okay. And that's an advantage. Yeah. So the first one, well, I got a 19 on my first roll. Damage is eight. Tiny Tim is looking, well, I mean, he. to be fair, he's already a wreck. He's just looking extra wrecky. Uh, bonus action as you shank him. I'm going to use uh, two weapon fighting and I'm going to go for him again. What did he ever do to you? He <laughs> broke Dawn, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> that is a 24 to hit. Yeah, that barely grazes him. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't add my modifier, isn't it, for my two yeah. weapon fighting? Yeah. So it's just a three then. You bury both swords into Tiny Tim. I mean, he's still standing, but he's looking fairly beat up uh, at this point. But he's still got fight in him. Dill is going to take a swipe at you, good boy, because, you know, he stuck the first guy and he's going to do what Fizzy wants him to do, and that's stick everybody. Does a 12 hit? Nope. Okay. Oh, and an 8 doesn't hit either. Okay, Dill is awful. Uh, it's only good at people stabbing people as they run away. Yeah, he just, he's literally doing that, like, yeah, 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 but his eyes are kind of shut because uh, he doesn't really want to fight anybody, so he's like, yeah. Uh, and kind of half stabbing the air and you're, he's nowhere near you as he's stabbing <laughs> it's, it. He looks a bit pathetic. Fizzy is... She's kind of whipped. She's like... She's like, hey, 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 one down, three to go, squeaky. And she turns back on you, Professor Penny. She lunges with shocking grasp 
20 to hit on natural 20 yeah okay um <laughs> and that is a 1d8 and one lightning damage but you can't take I can take it (laughs) (laughs) but you can't take reactions until it starts your next turn so uh -uh. Penny uh, it is you Penny's gonna do that same sort of like rubbing as I guess wings we're saying whatever the flipper wings that fins are and um, there's just that little like whitish blue like shocks kind of going between them she's gonna lock eyes with Busy and say you're hurting way more than we are right now this can be over and i'll just wait see what she says not holding my action but hopefully yeah she responds give me a give me a persuasion check oh nope definitely not uh four oh this is this is definitely over you you see that magic is kind of crackling around her as well and her eyes are locked on you she seems hell-bent on ending ye and breaking the more of ye Okay, well then, if that's the case, I didn't want to do this. And then it's going to do the same sort of, like, prayer hands point with this huge ice shard just come right back at her again for another time. Uh, 11? It does not, I'm afraid. Just barely. Barely, really, really. That sucks. Bonus action? (laughs) Okay, this is going to be super cheesy, but I'm going to try it anyway. So as a bonus action, you'll all see Professor Penny sort of like crack open his like his book, a big book he carries with him, and uh, a little feathered quill just appears out of nowhere, and he starts writing in this book. And on it, it'll say, you are loved, you can stay here, but stop fighting. Your potential pals, question mark, with all of our names listed. Oh. rip it out of the book and this is wizardry quill and just like paper airplane it or mage hand it however you want to do it like over to her it, it would say it's a little bit of both it's like you you throw it and you're like oh that's like that's gonna miss and then mage hand just kind of like eh, guides it over to her and it lands kind of in her kind of in her hands and she she sees it and we're gonna roll for it It's an Xmas miracle. As Fizzy just starts to cry. <gasps> and she's obviously she's in pain. She's crying from pain too. But uh, <laughs> like she literally starts to sob over the, the paper. Uh, and like kind of brings it up to her face and just starts to like snivel and cry into it. And the magic around her hands just dissipates. But I... I broke her. I just... I I didn't... I just didn't want to be forgotten. And... He forgot me. And... They... They just threw me away. She is just sniveling into the the paper. As she remembers being an Xmas gift uh, oh so many years ago that was discarded after the novelty of a new pet wore off. And now... The girl, is, and, and she looks down at Dawn's body, and she, uh, I'm so sorry. She runs right past you, uh, Penny, and scarpers up the uh, the wall uh, to the window, and, and looks down at everybody else around her. I'm sorry, and she runs. And Dill kind of looks what she said Uh, and and he turns and he starts (laughs) scarpering up the wall as well and tiny tim and he's kind of like trying to get a tiny on his back trying to grab at him and just kind of shakes give me a yeah do you want to give me a strength check to see if you can stay on him uh tiny dancer i hope i didn't rip a chunk out of him let's see (laughs) Uh, you're beating a dirty 20 Uh (laughs) uh-huh That is a five. Okay. Uh, yeah. He, uh, on, on seeing Fizzy make a run for it, he shrugs you off very easily. And he full on like gorilla runs after her uh, up the stairs, bolting past good boy and leaves the three of you there. He doesn't even look out. The, he doesn't even look back. Neither did Dill. Tiny's going to roar at them. 
well, you definitely made the naughty list. <laughs> and he's going to fly straight over to Dawn and see if he can attach, reattach her arm. Come on, dear, come on. It's only a little, a little crack. You'll be fine. Up you get. Yeah, good boy will try to help you by casting cure wounds. And Penny? I didn't mean you needed to go. I was saying maybe you could stay, but oh well, this is better than nothing. And then he'll uh, try over as well, the group. Uh, as you shout this out the window at Fizzy and company, there's no response. Looking down the, the stairs, you see Tiny and Good Boy trying to put Dawn back together. And Good Boy, as you cast Cure Wounds, it's the same thing. It's She's inanimate. Doesn't work. I'll let out like a sad howl. Tiny's going to start panicking a little bit and he's going to pace back and forth on the stair holding Don's arm in his hand. I mean, and just be like, <laughs> thinking out loud, well, well, the giant woman, she she cast the magic and she brought us, us all to life. So maybe when she comes back, she can cast the magic again. Yes, that's it. And and, and I promise, dear, and he turns back to Don's inanimate body on the floor. And, and I promise <laughs> I will never ask you to do the voice ever again if you just wake up right now. Go on, right now. There is no response. Maybe I could take her to Fia. Fia, Fia, yes. The, that's the, the giant woman's spawn. So she might have some sort of magic also. Let's let's do it. Great idea, Professor. As the, the three of you stand around trying to f- come up with a plan, uh, and, and, and Professor, you think of maybe bringing her to, maybe if we bring Dawn to Fia, the magic might work. You all... Just hear a yawn at the top of the stairs. And as you turn, you see a young Shader Kai of hair, just this mess uh, of, of, of curls and twists that are kind of like matted down and very, very sleepy in her nightgown, uh, dragging a small blanket with her. Mom? Mommy? And she sees the the toys on the stairs. Oh, you're... You're not mom. And good boy, you remember the message. And the, the, the spell comes back to you. Though we may be apart, my little ones were joined by hearts. I wish you well, I wish you joy. Sweet dreams, my brave girl and brilliant boy. As you remember it... From you comes Una's voice as you carried her message and her wish for her daughter and her son to have something, some happy memory of this day, but what was going to come afterwards and the news that she had left and gone. But there'd be something. There'd be these toys. And you feel the magic well around you and as you bay and low and and, and cry and howl and Fia just kind of looks on at the the scenario of all these toys around her gathered at stairs being silly toys and it makes sense because that's what toys do when you go to sleep the toys get up and they do things and only the way that kids see toys all of you feel the Xmas magic kind of rippling and there's just this energy and it's you feel it kind of fading from you a little bit just as you got closer to the to the to the call to that beacon to to Fia and Quillo, that 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 bond grew more intense. But the the drain on your Xmas magic has been building. And as this spell washes over, and the Una's voice, kind of like a song, like a little sweet little carol or a poem, emanates from Good Boy. He starts to glow. And then. The Professor and Oliver starts to glow. And Tiny Dancer starts to glow. And the magic swirls up around the three of you. Tiny Dancer, from your hand, Dawn's porcelain slender hand is pride free. And her body is lifted up. And the magic, this pink and white light, dances around her. And her arm fixes in place. And the camo paint is shinier, it's newer, it's brighter. And her spear is fixed. It's a proper hook. 
and there's a little kind of bleating noise as little dust bunnies transform into little porcelain sheep and they bounce up the stairs around her as Dawn, the shepherdess, is made unbroken and Xmas magic takes hold. You start to feel yourselves growing tired. The colours and the lights start to fade and you feel yourselves being scooped up as Fia picks up the four toys from the stairs, takes note of the little brown card and the ribbon and the two presents, the good boy and the tiny dancer for Quillo and Professor Penny and his trusted steed, Oliver and Dawn and her flock for Fia. She places Tiny Dancer and the good boy at the foot of Quillo's bed and she takes her porcelain shepherd and her stuffed penguin and polar bear to her room and she carefully places Dawn on a shelf near her window and she curls up beside Professor Penny and she waits for morning as the Isidrums wake up Xmas morning and Fia has a ridiculous dream about toys fighting mice and singing dust bunnies when the sudden realisation that Una did not return from work that night dawns on the family it's to their toys that Fia and Quillo turn to for comfort and joy and protection and for the next couple of years as the toys grow old and faded by light and gather dust the toys are protected as every day small grey little mouse with a little pink streak checks through a window to make sure that Dawn and her flock are all together that Penny and Oliver are safe that Tiny Dancer is still statuesque and a tower of testosterone and that the good boy is still the best boy and she makes that vow and every Xmas she returns and we will leave it there Thank you so much for listening. Uh, I have been uh, Declan, the Dungeon Master, and it's been my absolute privilege to run this game for four absolutely amazing role players. I'm Grace online. I'm Dungeons and Dingbats, or at D and Dingbats. Tonight I played Professor Penny. I run a blog and a Discord that's a bunch of TTRPG players and content creators that we just like ask goofy questions and create cool stuff. So feel free to join. Everything's in my Twitter bio if you want to get in touch. I am Cat, aka Dungeon Delves. I make tabletop comics across the socials. I was playing the good dog or good boy as I think his name ended up slightly changing but never mind he's we can all agree that whatever his name is he is the best boy. Uh, I'm Fiona I was playing tiny dancer today so I got to live my real male fantasy out. It was great crack. I enjoyed it very much, and I'm sure uh, Don really enjoyed the attention. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I normally play Nora in Rise of the Forsaken, which is the D8 Dungeon stream that takes place every second Sunday on their Twitch, so please do check us out. And Alice? I played Don, the broken slash hardened shepherd slash unbroken. slash unbroken i am eily cyrus on my personal twitter but you will also find me chatting back to you 90 percent of the time on the d8 socials come say hi and thank you so much for listening we're back to our scheduled programming i don't know if we're taking time off i think we're back normally after two weeks so i don't know depends on how much work we got edited and how much <laughs> mince pies I ate over the holidays just make sure you keep an eye on our socials at D8 Dungeon check out our discord lastly I again I really really hope that uh, wherever you are and whoever you're with that you are having a happy safe and wonderful holiday and be good to yourself and have a little bit of Xmas joy and kindness and funness and silliness from us thank you for listening and we'll see you in the new year ugh that's weird 
See you in 2022. <laughs>